Recent shifts in tech and markets has had an impact on photography gigs. So I wanna talk about how to market right now with some of these changes going on so that you can start getting more gigs and also help retain clients as well. So the first thing to be aware of is social media marketing. And this isn't necessarily for getting new clients. I'm gonna talk about getting new clients a little bit later in this episode, but this is still a critical first step because you have to start a branding and you need to brand yourself properly, especially in this changing market because it's not just the platform, it's also the type of content that you're posting on the platform that's having the most impact. And we can take a look at that with a few statistics. Instagram and Facebook still are the most most popular and Facebook is leading as far as popularity, but that's only for the amount of traffic because when we take a look at engagement, Facebook is much lower when it comes to engagement on posts that are put out there. Instagram is excelling and you've probably seen why. If you've ever used both platforms, you know that Facebook can tend to be a jungle of opinion. But when it comes to Instagram, it has that TikTok effect. It has this, you're posting videos, you're posting content, you're posting the content that you create as a creator. So you're posting things that are relevant to your work. So that's why you'll have more engagement as a photographer when you're taking a look at Instagram compared to using Facebook but neither platform is gonna get you clients when you're first starting out. It's hard to get new clients that way, but it's the necessary evil to have. And it also can be fun too, to be engaging with other people and with clients, but it's really a branding and also a retention factor. Also, most importantly, is that when somebody's looking for a real estate photographer or a photographer in general, it's very rare that they're going to use a social media platform to conduct that search. They're gonna be using Google. I'm gonna to touch on that also throughout this episode. But ads on either platform, I don't really see them as being highly effective. And it's just more money than what you need because when it comes to niche markets and take real estate photography or even wedding photography, those niche markets are highly referral based. So there is exposure, there's also referrals, but there's ways to get yourself in the search properly. But the content, that we talk about when we're on these social media platforms, it's the type of content that also really matters. Both Instagram and Facebook and TikTok to somewhat of a lesser degree, these are extensions of your portfolio. So a lot of people will see your work first on Instagram or Facebook than what they would if they just visited your website. But most importantly is that it keeps clients engaged. So it keeps your followers engaged. So as you're retaining clients, and if they follow you then on social media, retaining clients is key because when you have engaged clients, you have referrals because people talk then about your work. If someone's following the work that you're doing, if they're a client, then they're more likely to then refer you to somebody else because you're gonna be in the forefront of their mind when somebody says, hey, who do you use a photographer or can you recommend one? Well, you're in the forefront because of that retention value. So that's where social media really excels. But more so than that, you have a few different options when you're posting stuff. And people say that reels are king, and to some degree they are, but when we take a look at the statistics for that, we can see that Definitely reels are still high, but above just photos are carousels. And that's really important when we take a look at Instagram, because if you're not familiar with carousels, it's where you're not just seeing one picture, but you can swipe and you can see more. And people are more engaged with that. The statistics obviously prove that, but more so too if you have something leading to it, like before, after type stuff, or you should see all these photos I took, or couldn't believe what all I captured, or something you should see all that's involved, swipe left. You have then more people engaged than they just see a photo and then they move on. If they see that there's more with those little dots uh, down by the picture itself showing that there's more, they wanna see more. They don't know what's behind door number three, door number two, so they wanna be able to swipe. So anyways, think about if you're not posting reels, a simple way is just to be posting more than one picture so that you have a carousel of pictures in a post. But when it comes to reels, they're still very popular and they can, will continue to be very popular because a lot of people love just watching video. But the problem is, is that you have this vertical uh, presentation of videos for these reels. And when we're shooting real estate, 
everything tends to be horizontal, tends to be in the landscape mode, which is very wide. That's what we want to show. But there's creative ways to do that where you can explode into pictures. You can then slowly pan back and forth. So there's a lot of ways to do that. And near the end of this video, I'm going to touch on a few tips on making those Instagram reels more impactful. And that's key too, because you have to make sure that they're engaging enough to make people want to keep watching them. But once again, social media marketing is for retention more than it is gaining new customers. So I'm going to be talking about that with a few different marketing strategies. But before I do, a point that I really need to drive home here, even when it comes to social media marketing, is that it's the marketing material that's highly important. So no matter what you do, even if you paid for ads, if you don't have really good marketing material to show your work, then it's not going to go anywhere. You have to have something that catches somebody's eye, something that they want to stop and scroll through on a carousel or watch on a reel, something to that effect. So it's sometimes more important of what you're trying to market than how you're trying to market it. And so this is something that you know I can help you with. So as you may be aware, I have a series of online courses on real estate photography. It covers everything from doing professional interior photography, expert editing, also on doing pro exteriors. And I've also sold best-selling books on real estate photography as well. And these are tools to help you become a better real estate photographer so that you can make really stellar images. I have links to all that down in the description for this video. But the point I really want to drive home here is that your work has to be not just stellar, not just good, but you have to be better than the competition because you are competing online and everywhere else when you're marketing to be the best photographer that someone will then pay for. And especially now you're up against what I call the photo mills where uh, they come in, they just hire cheap photographers and they run and gun through a place and they give some great price to a brokerage. But you can do better with quality and there are clients who will even pay more for that and we'll touch on that also as we get through this video. But the first thing is you need to have the marketing material strategy that shows that you stand out above the competition. It's got to be eye catching and something that'll say, I'm worth it. You should hire me. I'm going to help you not just sell the property, but sell you as the agent or company or whoever you're going to be targeting as we get through these strategies. And the next strategy on that is market diversification. It's, it's very simple. All that that means is that you need to have more skills than just taking real estate photos. I can't tell you how many times when I first started out, I would lose gigs because I didn't do drone or I didn't do video or I didn't do 360 tours. And even though the client might not want them, when they first talked to me about doing photos for them, they want to make sure that they had a one stop shop. And if I didn't provide all those things, then they weren't really keen on hiring me because they want a one stop shop. And that's something you're going to be competing against with photo mills. Now it's very easy to do. You can either learn all these skills yourself or network with other photographers in your area. As you probably know, watching various YouTube videos that I have is that I used to work with Jonathan, the drone guy. He sadly passed away earlier this year. And I have another drone guy that I work with full time, Karsten. Great guy, does all my drone work now. And it's having this network of being being able to then utilize other people's skill sets so that I don't have to do it all. So the same thing goes for video. You know, real estate videos are becoming a lot easier. And yeah, I've got a book on basic videography for real estate to help you out. But also now when we're talking about reels, things have gotten a lot simpler. So one of the things you can offer is sure, you can do real estate videography, learn how to do that or know somebody that does, but you can also offer doing various reels on Instagram, or if you prefer TikTok, it's not one of my recommendations, but you can do then real estate videos for them. And when it comes to tours, there's a lot of options, but the biggest thing is to make sure that you have market diversification so that you can get other types of clients and that clients that are looking for one-stop shops can hire you compared to photo mills that are going to compete against you. The next strategy that you really need to have right now is you have to have search engine marketing. 
And this is something that's been around for a long time, but the algorithms keep changing all the time. First thing everybody thinks about is, well, I gotta be on Instagram, or I gotta be on Facebook, and that's true to a large degree because when people are searching for photographers, it may be that they also show up in the search results from social media platforms. But more importantly than that, you need to have a website. Don't rely on just having your pictures out on Instagram or Facebook. You can get a really good professional website from, for instance, Zenfolio. They start at just $7 a month. And there are alternatives like Squarespace and others. And you can also take a look at my website, which I use Zenfolio for my website. But one of the best things for search optimization, it's not putting SEO keywords necessarily into your web page, as it is being part of the Google network. And you can do that for free by using Google Business. So you can use Google Business, it's free, it'll get you on the map literally. And then when somebody's looking for a real estate photographer, it'll know their area automatically. And when they Google it, you should show up in the list. But that's only for people who are actively looking for a real estate photographer. And something to bear in mind is that a lot of agents who are looking for a real estate photographer are probably new to the business. So they don't have a network yet. They don't know of all the various vendors yet. So do be aware of that as if you are found through a Google business uh, listing where someone found you, they say, I found you online, then they probably don't have a lot of experience, but they might. Just something to watch out for so that you're prepared that they might not know ahead of time how to be prepared, have a good checklist and all those other things that I talk about, having those things at the ready. So instead, especially if you wanna go after established clients, one of the best ways to do that is through selective direct marketing. And this is where you do your homework and you decide who you wanna reach out to to get the most bang for your buck. The amount of effort that you put in, if you were just to put an email blast out there and spam everybody in your area, you're gonna to go to everybody. You don't know what type of client you're gonna get if you're gonna get long lasting work from them or if they're even gonna pay well, if they're gonna be trustworthy. So you can use Zillow and just go to any city that you're working in, even down to your address, and you'll start getting a listing of homes. Once you do find a home and it comes up, then you're gonna be able to see who is listing that home in your neighborhood. You'll find all their contact information, but you don't wanna make a call yet. What you wanna do is also use Zillow's agent finder and look up that particular agent. When you do, you might find like in this case, they have zero reviews, they don't even have a picture up yet, which tells me that they aren't really an established agent yet. If you keep searching though for properties and other agents in your area, then eventually you're gonna find some that have lots of reviews that really stand out. And more so, when you start looking at those agents, then you'll be able to see how many sales they've had in the past 12 months. And then once you've found a handful of these people, start with just one, two, start ramping up slowly, is you send them a personalized email. Don't make it sound spammy. Just give a couple lines in there that, hey, I am a local photographer. I, was, I live actually close by to some of the listings that you've had, something to that effect. And then let them know that since you are close by, you'd be willing to work them out a deal, at least for the first shoot, something along those lines, but it has to be a personalized email. Once you get established and these uh, photos of yours, you're getting hired by a few agents, you're gonna get automatic referrals because you're gonna get automatic advertisement. The one advantage in real estate photography is that every time you shoot a listing, every agent in the area will see your photos because they want to know if there's a house that one of their buyers might be interested in. So they're constantly searching. And if your photos stand out, and once again, if they're stellar and you got really good marketing material because your photos are of, a, are of a high quality, they're gonna ask the listing agent, who does your photos? Well, there you go. You got an automatic referral. And then the next step after that is once you start working with an agent or two and you really get a good rapport with them, then you need to do what the photo mill are doing behind your back. And what they'll do, these photo mills will go out to a brokerage and they'll work out some special deal. They'll give a presentation, they'll talk to them, but they're able to do that because they can say, well, we've got a team that does drone and they do 360 tours, they do photos, all this type of stuff. 
If all you do is photography, then you can't compete with just the photo mills. If you can show that you're a one-stop shop and more so that you have an advantage, and that advantage is, is that you are a higher quality marketing material producer. So it's not a matter of just competing with price. Anybody can compete with price and it doesn't last. Those are unsustainable things like I've talked about before. But what you can have though is this competition in quality. And what that does is that's where agents who really know what it takes to market properties, the majority of them anyways, they'll be the ones that want to seek you out because they get more bang for their buck. Smart agents know something that you can also relay to other clients when potential clients, when you're trying to pitch your services, is that photos don't just sell the home, they sell the agent. So potential sellers, when they're interviewing agents for selling their property, they'll want to see what they've done. And if all that they see is that they've taken crappy cell phone pictures or low quality stuff, they might not be impressed with how are you going to market my home? This home is important to me. You're going to market it that way. They would be more leaning towards than someone who actually respects their home and shows that they do professional marketing material like it would be in a magazine. And then the other thing too is that you gotta step outside of the box of just listing agents. So there's more work than just real estate listings. There's also remodel companies, there's builders, designers, stagers, and those are companies and vendors that the photo mills can't compete with, but you can if you have good stellar quality photography. And typically they are just after photography. They rarely ever want a tour, rarely do they ever want a video. Sure, they might want drones sometime, but photography is probably 99% of what these other type of vendors want. So what you can do, very simple, is do a Google search in your area and search for remodel companies, builders, and you'll start seeing a variety of these businesses come up. And when they do, just feel free to stop by. You don't have to cold call. You can stop by. They're going to be open during business hours. You can ask to talk to somebody if, if they're not available, somebody in charge or a supervisor, a, a creative director, designer, something like that. Then you can just hand them a flyer. Be prepared with some marketing material to show your work, link to your website, leave a business card, traditional methods. These are companies that they do want to have good marketing material. Most of them do. And they'll be seeking out really good professional photographers. So do consider that. It's a slightly different marketing approach, but once again, going back to the social media marketing, that's still something you have to do, but you're going to be marketing different than you would an agent. This is where you have a big leg up. If you are not doing just typical photo mill run and gun stuff, you're doing professional photography, you can then make more money, but you have to be established first. So lastly, I just wanted to wrap up on some tips for making those Instagram posts. Now, reels are one of the leading types of content posted on Instagram right now. So something to bear in mind is that they're going to be vertical. You don't want to have people turning their phones. They won't. You want to have something, though, that is 1080 wide, 1920 high. And you might be thinking, well, if I'm doing video, I got to rotate my camera. Not at all. One, if you are going to take some video segments to put in, an easy way is just use your cell phone. And if you have your cell phone set to do recording at 4K, 60 frames per second, then you can get really good, smooth quality videos that you can slow down so that you get this butter smooth footage. And you also then can crop it really well because you'll have plenty of pixels. But of course, most of your photos will be plenty big enough to do some pixel cropping anyways. And of course, then you can pan those. So that's doing just some simple motion animations in like Premiere Pro, or you can do it in DaVinci. Every uh, type of video software editing program has this capability. And I'll do another video, if you'd like, on actually making these using Premiere Pro. So just let me know in the comments if you'd like to see more videos on that. But a key to this is that you want to be able to keep it at an attention span length that most people will watch. And even though Instagram's magic number is 59 seconds, nobody really is going to watch that long. It has to be short. It has to be impactful. It has to capture their attention and want them, more importantly, to see more. Try to keep it at about 30 seconds if you can. Don't worry about fading from black at the beginning and at the end. Make it impactful. Also, be careful on how much area you're going to be losing at the bottom. Whenever you watch reels, you'll notice there's all this stuff at the bottom for description and, and who made this and the 
amount of likes and messages, all that stuff is going to occupy a lot of that real estate at the bottom and it's not going to be seen as much. So make sure that your stellar content is toward the center of the frame. And most important of all is make it catchy. Make it something that somebody wants to watch. Put your mind into your clients for a second. Think about, well, what would they be wanting to watch on Instagram? Remember, if you're marketing for real estate photography or any photography in general, you're not marketing and putting stuff out there for other photographers just to get likes. You wanna make sure that something is out there to a target audience, somebody who you're trying to reach, and whatever it is that you're doing for them, what would that person want to see? And of course, these things are changing all the time. So you gotta stay on top of it and watch the markets as they shift and as they do, I'll keep you posted as well.